Video 500, William Hovey Smith. Hogball fries and testicular delights, a la Julia Childs. William Hovey Smith, 2016. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. And this is our 500th YouTube video. I promise you something special. And yes, we're going to give it to you. Now, you should be warned that this concerns all things testiculatory. Yes, testes, balls, Rocky Mountain oysters, lamb fries. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Now, all this sort of stuff came to my attention about a decade past when I was an editor for a magazine called Guns and Gear. And I received this t-shirt. You got to have balls to hunt. And this was from an outfit called Scent Sling. And what Scent Sling made was a slingshot. Burr. And what they sold were biodegradable balls that you sat in your deer stand and you actually shot out there in the neither regions to scatter your scent in places so you didn't have to walk there. Well, yeah. So, that gave me an idea that sooner or later, yeah, I was going to do something with these. Hmm. Well, I did write up an article at the time for the said magazine. But I also thought about more nefarious things to do. Now, I had been and worked in the West for years, and I was very familiar with Rocky Mountain oysters. And in fact, I had some, uh, well, just last year or year before in Kellogg, Idaho, as a matter of fact. And these were derived from calves, typical in the West. Now, if you ever saw this hilarious movie by Chevy Chase, yeah, now he is exposed to something they call lamb fries. Yeah, the testicles removed from lambs. All right, and uh, he had experiences with those. Well, for those of you who are not of an agricultural or rural origin, uh, here they are. Uh, these are from hogs. They're from boar hogs. And how do I know? Because I shot the hogs. Yep, you really did. And here I am with about a 185-pound Florida boar hog. And I'm a believer in hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. And so that's exactly what we're going to be about doing. Now, this is my actual first experience with these. I haven't done them before for myself, so we're going to get along these together. And I have checked out some YouTube videos by other people, by the way, and found they were basically the same introductory preparation steps, and then one could slice them and fry them in a batter of cornmeal and flour, etc., and salt, and that was the traditional fries. Or... One fellow was adventurous enough to do it in the manner of Julia Child's B. Bourguignon. Yeah! So we're going to take some of these and uh, put them in a beef bourguignon, except uh, our beef bourguignon is going to have hog testicles in it, as well as some other meat. I have some venison over there on the stove that we will use to fill out the dish. Because I don't have but two, four, six of them. But we're going to treat some of them both ways and find out how they do. Another wrinkle in this is that the testicles themselves have a coating of very tough skin-like material. And it takes a real good knife to go through this. And guess who has a real good knife? I do. This is one of my old designs, Hobie's Knives of China. 
and this happens to be the bok choy. And we will use this knife in all our preparation steps. Sure will. And you'll see how it works in a couple of different modes. Well, the first thing we have to do with these testicles at this stage is to, in effect, skin them. So we're going to bring up the camera and let you see how that's done. The testes at the top are as removed from the scrotum and at the bottom, as you would probably see them in a butcher shop, with that sufficient layer removed. Well, here I have my good surgical grade rubber gloves, because we are about to do a kind of surgery. Now, this is the testicle as you would buy it from a butcher shop if you were able to do it. And yes, you can. Uh, there are butcher shops that have them. Now, the skin that I'm speaking of is right here. You can see the blade sort of pricks under it like this. And this is tough stuff. And it takes a while to skin this back from each testicle. The testicles are sort of hard to grasp, so you don't want to puncture yourself with your knife either. But you go under your skin like this and get it started. And proceed. Now that I've practiced with five of these, I've got my technique down a little bit better. So, to show you hopefully well on this one, you take your sharp point of your knife. Now these things are hard to hold, they're a little slippery. You put this and you cut. And then you make a straight cut all the way down. Like that. Then you go ahead and you make a slice. Now you do lose a little bit of meat here, but that's all right. Like this. So you get enough that you can start. Okay. Now you've got enough here that you can actually put down on the board like this. And then you take your knife and you roll it flat. Like this. And you see how you're just now removing just the skin. It's separating very nicely among the skin. And it just rolls off like that. Bang. And you've got your testicle skin. All right. Now it's obvious there is a difference in color between here and here. What's the difference? This is a sexually mature hog. These are not quite yet. They were small boars. This one was actually a mature boar. Although a young one yet. He was about two years old. If you find any little skin remaining, just go ahead and dice that off too. So, uh, we now have them skint. And now what we're going to do is we're going to soak them for a little bit in salt water. And that will draw some of the excess blood out of them. We're going to do that for about two hours. And then we're going to lightly boil them to firm them up a little bit. While our testicles are soaking in a bowl here, we're going to prepare the vegetables. And for the bouillon. Now, what the French would do is everything in this bowl over here would go in a pot on the back of the stove. <laughs> and that would be a stock. Yeah. These are old carrots. They're a little bit on the strong side.
Okay, that gives a very nice slice, very nice dice. Okay. So, now we have our onions. And we can start preparing our venison. Everything is now clean and sterile again. And I'm no longer wearing gloves because I, I really don't need them here. Uh, this is venison here. As you see, it's in irregular hocks. Now some of this is tendon-rich meat, like this piece right here. And this has a lot of flavor to it, even though it has a lot of these tendons in it. I'm going to leave those and just cut to the bottom and then let that slide off like that. So that's how we're going to handle that particular piece of meat. Now this is just one nice muscle mass here. So we just cut down to the muscle sheath and slide it right off, just like that. This is going to be like a stew after all. Uh, we guys like our stews pretty chunky. So I'm going to leave the meat, say, about an inch square. Something like that. Uh, for gals, yeah, y'all usually want your meat finer than that. Alright, now that's looking pretty good. And that's going to be the base for our meat outside of the uh, testicle. That's what we might put in it. Well, we have taken our fries. And we have cut them into quarter inch pieces. And we are now cooking as you see. And the first of our hog fries are up. Yep. Nice and golden brown. And the second batch is cooking in the fryer. Now we're cooking in the fryer at 375 degrees. And we have battered in cornmeal, salt, pepper, and flour. And dipped them in wine, and we're using Cabernet Sauvignon, and I'm a real wine connoisseur. Uh, I think the only thing better than a $4 wine is a $3 wine, and this is a $3 wine from Walmart, and it does just fine. Pretty good drinkable wine, by the way. And so we are proceeding. We now have our oil heating and when it gets up to, oh, about 375, that will be frying temperature. In the meantime, we're going to cut these into about quarter inch slices. Now, to cut, we take our goody knife again. Give it a few strokes with the steel, after all. It's been doing a lot of work on this cutting board, and each time it drags against the cutting board, it of course dulls a little bit. And this is a carbon steel knife. It's not imperious to being cut dull. So yeah, any good chef would occasionally touch up his blood. These are not lifetime knives that you sharpen once and then never do again. As a matter of fact, there's no such thing. All right, a nice cut. This is a little rubbery. It's a strange material to cut. It's not like ordinary meat at all. What does it smell like? Well, nothing much in particular. A little bit like pork. And despite common and popular belief, it smells nothing of urine. As a matter of fact, if you have anything that smells of urine around and among the testes, that, that animal had a very serious problem. 
Now, uh, the urinary tract is altogether different. The testes are purely about sexual functions. Okay. Hmm. The younger ones slice very much easier. Not surprising, I guess. Well, these will be the tenderer of them. Well, there we are. Fried hog balls. As the late Justin Wilson would say, yeah, you need to sample a little bit of your product from time to time just to make sure it's all right. Yeah! Well, we have a sip of law. And surprisingly, for its low price, this is a drinkable wine. Now, if you go to a restaurant and they are cooking with wine, I guarantee you they're not taking their expensive bottled wines out of the basement and bringing it up to the kitchen. Not <laughs> by a long shot. They are buying the cheapest boxed wines that they can get, uh, usually reds, and that's what they're used for cooking. You don't need expensive wines to cook with, and you're sort of wasting them if you are. Uh, because when you're frying like this, you're instantly volatizing all the alcohol anyway, but you did get some residual taste. All right, we're up to temperature again, so we can proceed. So we take our deer meat, and we drop it down here in our wine a little bit. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Let's sit there and stew for a few seconds and work it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Put it in our flour and cornmeal and salt. Okay. Piece is nicely coated here. All right. Just drop those in. Making sure you don't drop your fingers in there either. Uh, fried fingers don't do well, by the way. It takes an awful long time for them to heal. Now about Julia Childs. Uh, Julia Childs was probably introduced to uh, various types of Rocky Mountain oysters that she might remember at about age five, I would imagine, if not sooner. Because remember, she was from Texas. She was a Texas ranch gal. So she knew all about this kind of stuff. So don't feel like I'm giving her a great insult by incorporating some Rocky Mountain oysters into one of her dishes. Because if she'd thought about it, she'd probably done exactly the same thing if in fact she did not. And it would have been real a real blast, I think, for her to spring this on some of her New York friends. Uh, so she might have from time to time. I wouldn't be surprised. She would have gotten a kick out of that. I'm using just one hand because that's all I need and no need of messing them both up. But you see, they get pretty sticky if they do. Yeah. No big deal. It washes off. Well, I think we're now ready to turn out. Yeah, that's fine. Remember, we're going to cook this more anyway. So I'm going to call that one good. And capture all this crust in here, too. Because this will actually thicken the, uh, the stew. For the hog balls bourguignon, uh, after the manner of Julia Childs, sort of, uh, I use this big thick cast iron container here. 
and we're going to start it off with a little canola oil and then we're going to brown and slightly saute the carrots and the potatoes then add the meat then add some wine then add onions and so on and so on and so on as we build up the dish I'm starting to get a little smoke so I think we're about ready you should hear a slight sizzle as this hits yeah you do okay that's just as it should be we start adding some meat here so these are some of our hog balls This crusty stuff will help thicken it. Here's our venison. You can say it looks just alike. How do you tell the difference? Well, as it turns out, the hog balls are much tenderer right now. And now we can add onions. And proceed to saute. You want to let the onions get somewhat caramelized, but not completely at this stage. The onions are starting to get just about transparent. And it's obviously we need some liquid in here now. So this is where the wine comes in. Now this is what I use to dip the meat in. And you notice I just pour it off from the top. I left the flour residue down there in the bottom. Okay. And we still need, need more liquid. And we finish off the rest of the bottle. Now we need to turn it down. Cover. And just allow it to slowly simmer. been made into a variant of hush puppies. We have here our meat which we have fried up for hound doggies. We have here our hog balls which we have fried of course and these taste yes uh, very much like chicken livers and they are quite edible and they are soft. The mature Hogs, balls, testicles are a little tougher than the immature ones, and they have a little more taste. Yeah, do, but eat just fine. Now, in the stew, what we found and here we go, there's one right there. Get those from the mature hog, again, a little more chewy, but
but these are less chewy than actually the venison, which was treated exactly the same way. Now this chews very, very easily between the teeth. I mean, you could actually eat this even if you didn't have teeth. It's that tender. Now so far as the regular venison goes, here's a piece right here. That is still chewy. I mean, you don't need a fork and knife to cut it up in small pieces. You can chew it very, very well. But it's a little tougher than the testicular materials. Hmm. Potatoes just fine. And chop good. And the carrots good. And the whole flavor is that of a venison stew. Now this particular stew could use just a tad more salt, but yeah, it's just fine like it is. Yeah, that's good stuff, guys. The next time you're out there hog hunting, and you see them hog balls running around, go get you some. Yep, they're worth taking, they're worth cooking, and they're certainly worth eating. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. If you're curious about how this hog was taken, you can see this video on YouTube. Now, I am the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we also cook, and there are recipes in all of my books, like crossbow hunting, as well as extreme muzzleloading. For those interested in the guns themselves, I have e-books, muzzleloaders for hunters, and shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader. I also have a new series of business books under the Profit brand. The first of these is Ideas for New Businesses on How to Found Your Own Million or Billion Dollar Business, and here's a blurb about me and the book. Now, mammalian testicles are eaten worldwide, and even though uh, most guys cringe about the idea, uh, they are really good, tasty food if handled properly. For more information about my books, blogs, and 500 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.